In May 2012, 10 Keene State College students and two faculty members traveled to Bosnia and Herzegovina through the honors program. Bosnia is a post-war society with a unique and rich culture because it is the place where East meets West. Although remnants of the war are still evident 20 years later, the people, their customs, and their history are remarkable. Although we spent the entire semester prior to our trip studying the war and its lasting effects, nothing could have prepared us for what we learned during our time in Bosnia. We learned about the war firsthand from concentration camp survivors, former refugees, and students our own age affected by the war's aftermath. Through education and advocacy, the country is currently rebuilding. By sharing this powerful knowledge, we hope to take part in the conversation with an end goal of preventing crimes against humanity and acts of mass atrocity. Something I was incredibly surprised by when we got to Bosnia was how beautiful the country was. I had never seen so many mountains and such beautiful water. I was surprised about how willing the people we spoke with were to share their stories, many of which were very traumatic. However, to help us understand what they went through and how powerful the conflict was, everyone was very open. Hearing the stories of people who survived the war was a truly humbling experience. One of the survivors who spoke with us was a man named Hase, who was the owner of the hotel we stayed at in Sansky Most. His story and journey is truly inspirational. During the war, he was held in concentration camp. He experienced many near-death experiences while there. Not knowing whether he would survive, he wanted to find a way to make sure that his story would be told. While at the camp, he stole a nail and a piece of scrap wood with which he created a small figure that resembled a man with his head hung. To him, it represented the prisoners standing the same way they were forced to during the camp. After surviving the camp, his figure was given to a man who eventually had a life-size replica made. Today, his statue is the symbol of concentration camp survivors. One day, Hase hopes that this statue will not represent the prisoners in their forced positions, but rather the perpetrators hanging their heads in shame. One of the most sobering days of the trip was when we visited an identification center for missing persons. Mass graves are being uncovered in Bosnia even to this day, and the remains from these graves are sent to centers like this one to be tested and hopefully identified. But because mass graves were often moved around the country multiple times, remains are difficult to identify. However, the DNA analysis and technology used in Bosnia is the most advanced in the world. DNA samples from Hurricane Katrina and the tsunami in Japan were sent to Bosnia to be correctly identified. While this is impressive, it is a sobering reminder of just how brutal the war truly was. The work that these men and women are doing is helping to provide closure and comfort to many families in the country who still may not know where their loved ones are. While in Sansky Mos, we spent time volunteering with the Center for Peacebuilding, or SIM. SIM was founded by two Bosniak men after the war when they realized that they did not want their children to have to go through what they went through. SIM's main focus is to work with youth to create a more peaceful culture. Many schools in Bosnia are segregated based on ethno-religious identity, so SIM provides a safe place for people of all ethno-religious identities to interact. One of the major obstacles that Bosnia faces is that there is now a whole generation of students that have gone through a segregated school system. It is only the older generations that have memories of coexistence from when Bosnia was part of Yugoslavia. My biggest experience of culture shock was learning how people still don't get along based on their different ethnicities and religions. Some of the high school students that we met explained to us that it is still hard to be friends with someone from a different ethnicity because there is still so much tension. SIM is doing its best to recreate the united and peaceful country that Bosnia was just 20 years ago. One of our most powerful moments with SIM was a workshop on identity. We were told to choose six identities and write them on a piece of paper. One by one, we struggled to eliminate identities we had written down to choose our most important one. As white, middle-class Americans, we had no problem coming up with six identities and had trouble eliminating them. We were told that give this same workshop to a group of Bosnians our age, and they would have the opposite problem. Ethno-religious identity is so important to them that it seems the only identity they can come up with. While in Sansky Mos, we visited Vahidin's village, Harustavo. Our first stop was the cemetery for all the members of his village killed during the war. We learned that green headstones are used as markers to signify that a person has been newly buried. I was confused when I saw green headstones that had 1992 as the date of death. 
I learned that those people had been buried in mass graves that had been dug up and moved and sometimes moved again, so their bones were scattered all across Bosnia. This was a common fate for many Bosnians killed during the war. My favorite memory from the trip was meeting Vahid Nomanovic and Julia Dowling, our hosts and guides, and traveling around the country with them. We were so eager to learn about the country and they were so willing to immerse us in the culture that we all became really great friends and have kept in touch ever since. My favorite memory from the trip is being with Vahidin. He immediately made us feel so welcomed and comfortable even though being in a foreign country was pretty overwhelming. He is an incredible person and touched all of our lives. Although we had many amazing experiences throughout our two weeks in Bosnia, my happiest memory is our walk through Vahidin's village, Aristovo. When we reached the top of the hill and looked down over the river and valley, I was so impressed. I've never been anywhere so beautiful. In Sanski Most, we visited a woman's shelter named Krajina Tir. The organization started in Travnik, where a group of women wound up in 1992 after they were removed from their own villages. The women lived in terrible conditions and feared death for themselves and their loved ones. Krajina Tir was originally the name of the small meetings they held as a support group in Travnik, where they could talk about and process what they were going through together. Eventually, it turned into a more formal organization based out of Sanski Most that focuses on providing services to women, including health services, emotional support, and job training for women who lost their husbands and now had to make a living to support themselves for the first time. The biggest culture shock for me was the call to prayer, which occurred five times during the day. We would just be going about our day and be interrupted by the sound of an imam singing for the community to hear. Although at first it seemed bizarre, it became comforting to hear by the end of the trip. By the time I returned home, I found myself waiting around for when call to prayer would begin. So one of the things about Bosnia is that while they have ethnic diversity, they also have religious diversity. And so we spent time visiting a mosque, a Jewish temple or synagogue, and a, an Orthodox, a um, Serbian Orthodox priest. And Sim also works with peace building and interreligious dialogue, because religion is also kind of a role in the segregation. While in Sanski Most, we visited an orphanage or a center for children without adequate parental care. This center was established in 2000 by the Swiss, however it now receives little support. The center consists of two homes for children and currently houses two girls and seven boys between the ages of 12 and 18 years old. As one of the owners of the orphanage said, we try our best to help children grow healthy, but we lack support. We also try very hard to keep connections that children have with their biological families, but only connections that are healthy, because then they become helpful resources when they become adults. One famous place we visited in Sarajevo was the brewery. During the siege of Sarajevo, all gas and water was cut off from the city. The brewery was the only place in the city that had tapped into a local spring, so they were the only source of water during the siege. The experience that had the biggest impact on me was walking through the city of Sarajevo. The damage to the buildings made all the information about the war and the personal stories about the war come alive. The evidence was suddenly right in front of us. When walking the roads of Sarajevo, there are spots along the sidewalks that look like rose petals. These represent places where shells killed at least 10 people during the war. In the beginning of the trip, we thought these were mere decorations. It was not until later that we realized that we were walking along ground that just 20 years prior were places of massacre. It was a frightening reality. The most surprising thing for me was the amount of physical damage that is still left from the war. There are shells of buildings and bullet holes and walls in the middle of Sarajevo simply because the people lack the resources to fix them. My biggest moment of culture shock happened on the first day when we were walking through the city. I realized that every single building was still ridded with bullet holes and shell marks. Then we visited the National Court of Bosnia and Herzegovina. Now, in 2000, it was founded in 2005, so now the court is working with mostly post-war crimes um, and conflicts and kind of working towards reconciliation. On our final day in Bosnia, we visited the American Embassy in Sarajevo. This facility serves to make Washington, D.C. aware of what is happening in the country, while encouraging the nation to build mutual understanding among the people of Bosnia. We met with representatives of three of the different offices at the embassy, including the Office in Public Diplomacy, which monitors issues in the country and identifies small grants for schools and promoting arts and human rights. 
The U.S. Agency for International Development serves to improve food security, global health, food production, and agriculture. It has also repaired bridges, roads, and rebuilt schools within Bosnia and has transitioned into a program of institutional development. The main goals of the American Embassy are to promote economic growth, democracy, and governance. It works with local government to try to empower female representation in the government and has pushed for Bosnia's integration into the European Union for political stability. We went to the Research and Documentation Center Sarajevo during the second week of our trip, which is a nonprofit aimed at collecting information countrywide about the war and documenting the lives of those displaced from their homes or killed. The Documentation Center seeks to identify all perpetrators, witnesses, victims, and places of killings throughout the war by collecting interviews, governmental documents, as well as primary sources. Their database currently holds more than 90,000 names, all of whom they know the conditions under which the individuals were killed. They have an additional 5,100 names which are disputable, and they are currently looking to continue verifying these individuals. The director, Mirsad Tokatsa, emphasized to us that genocide is not about number but about intention, which is why his work of tracking deaths of individuals is so important. In Sarajevo, we visited an organization called the American Corner. Here, we met a woman named Z.R. who told us her story of surviving one of the rape camps in Focha during the war. The UN estimates that there were between 20,000 and 50,000 rapes during the war. ZR was among 16 women who testified against her perpetrators at the International Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia, in which hers and the other women's identities were hidden for protection. This was considered one of the first successful trials that protected its victims. In many cases, women had to testify right in front of their attackers and later walk the same streets as them in their village. ZR testified in 2002 against her perpetrators, but didn't see them behind bars until October 4, 2011. It was because of this woman's bravery and many other women that testified at the ICTY that rape was counted as a weapon of war rather than just a result of it. It was an honor to meet such a brave woman. Unfortunately, the political discourse in Bosnia is largely driven by ethnicity. Parties focus on ethnocentric issues rather than issues of social justice, human rights, and economics. Because Bosnian women are a marginalized segment of society, this makes female involvement in politics more important than ever. One major issue for Bosnian women is bringing justice to the soldiers who systematically raped and imprisoned countless women during the war. To this day, prosecution of these men is difficult, rare, and traumatic for the victims. The Ministry of Human Rights and Gender Equality focuses on the integration of gender issues in all of politics, which is vital for obvious reasons. This organization is the first in the region to create a long-term action plan for empowering women. Eighteen members of various parts of the government created the action plan together. They believe that it is important to tie economic benefits and growth to human rights in order to make the government more interested. Most importantly, they work to empower women economically, which will in turn allow them the opportunity to participate politically. I was most surprised when I was told that there are still existing animosities between the Serbs and the Bosniak Muslims more than 20 years after the war. I guess the genocide really cut deep into the people, and it will take a lot of work to heal such a big gash in Bosnia's culture and history. I believe that in order for Bosnia to fully recover and prevent another war, it must learn. As we discovered, many of Bosnia's youth do not interact with members of other ethno-religious identities. This continuation of a culture of conflict is not conducive to a peaceful future, and organizations like SIM are an important part of continuing to bridge those gaps between the three major ethno-religious identities to find commonality instead of differences. I think that the best way to prevent another war and to help the country recover is to promote interfaith and intercultural relationships. This is especially true for the youngest generation. Learning to accept other religions and ethnicities will foster a more peaceful future. Organizations like SIM are instrumental in this effort. In order to recover from the genocide and to prevent one from occurring in the future, I believe that the people must acknowledge the fact that a genocide did in fact occur in Bosnia. They must also accept that there has to be a way to move past it, because ignoring it and pretending it didn't happen will only allow it to happen again. I believe that reintegration is a key component in promoting the friendly and peaceful coexistence of the Serbs, Croats, Bosniaks, and other ethnic groups. 
In order to prevent another war, I believe the government in Bosnia would have to change. Right now, they rotate between three different presidents from each ethnicity every eight months, and hardly anything gets done. Not to mention the high amount of corruption. With a more stable and peaceful government, the country's economy could get back on track, and I believe people would be more inclined to live peacefully. It is vital to keep the hatred among the groups from continuing through the generations. Teaching children tolerance from a young age is at least a step toward preventing another war. Organizations such as SIM with ties to local communities are especially important in this process. It is through these types of high impact experiences that we learn the most. Since returning from Bosnia and Herzegovina, each of us has become an advocate for this country, desperately seeking the formula for peace. We've briefly seen the world through an entirely different and highly important lens, and for that we are grateful to those who have shared their stories with us. Without the willingness of those affected by mass atrocity to speak out, it is impossible to begin to learn from the mistakes of the past and seek a peaceful future.